apologies. Sometimes I assume that people understand things simply because I do. Someone contacted me to say that all I am really saying in video 28 is that time is relative and that any scientist will agree with me. I assume that people would be able to put video 27 and 28 together and understand how this proves that the speed of light is not roughly 300 million meters per second but rather that the speed of light is infinite. So if you agree with video 28 and agree that time is relative, go back to video 27 and look at this image. According to science, we can confirm the speed of light at roughly 300 million meters per second because if we shine a laser onto a reflector on the moon, we have to wait 1.3 seconds for the light to return. But we also agree that time is relative. So if I am standing next to the person shining that laser onto the moon and if I could travel with the laser beam at close to the speed of light or at the speed of light, when I got back to earth, I would have aged less than the person shining the light. For him 1.3 seconds passed and he aged by 1.3 seconds. Moving at close to the speed of light, I only aged by 1 second. Here is the magic that I thought people would be able to put together for themselves using video 27 and video 28. The person standing on earth had to wait 1.3 seconds for light to make the journey. So he concluded that light travels at the speed of roughly 300 million meters per second based on the distance to the moon. That person aged by 1.3 seconds. I traveled the same distance to the moon and back, but I only aged by 1 second. Bear in mind that it doesn't matter if I'm traveling to the moon, it only matters that I'm covering the same distance, but I'm doing it over a shorter time relative to the person waiting on earth. We agree that time is relative, so none of us is the base time. The guy standing on earth is not the basis of time and me traveling at high speed is not the base time because we cannot be egocentric. Time doesn't belong to either of us. For the person on earth, light took 1.3 seconds to make the journey to the moon and back. So light must be traveling at roughly 300 million meters per second for him. For me, traveling with the light and covering the same distance to the moon and back, light only took one second from my perspective. I only aged by one second. So relative to me, moving much faster, light took less time to travel the same distance. If you can grasp that, then you can see that something is very wrong with our understanding of the speed of light and what our scientists are calculating as the speed of light is wrongly based on how long they have to wait here on earth for light to travel relative to earth. For me, who was moving faster, light made the trip in less time. Light covered the same distance in less time. How can that be if the speed of light is absolute and you cannot add to the speed of light no matter how fast you move? How is this possible? It's not that the speed of light is not absolute. Einstein was perfectly right. You will never travel faster than light. And in all my work, I never contradict that fundamental law. The speed of light is absolute. So what are they measuring here on Earth? They are simply measuring the speed of light relative to Earth, which is time. On Earth, at the speed of Earth, it takes 1.3 seconds of time for us to see the light make the journey to the moon and back. That's all on us. That has nothing to do with the actual speed of light, but rather with how fast time is moving for us here on Earth. If I move faster relative to Earth, light can cover the same distance in less time. For me, moving faster relative to the Earth, the time would maybe be one second. Our sense of time is relative to each other based on how fast we are moving relative to each other but also relative to the absolute speed of light respectively. But we will never be able to move faster than light and probably never even reach the absolute speed of light which is infinitely faster than a mere 300 million meters per second. Science has confused our sense of time here on earth with the absolute speed of light. You need to help me share this 
because some of our greatest scientists working at places like NASA and CERN still think that the speed of light is only 300 million meters per second. If you Google what is the speed of light, you will get 300 million meters per second. And it will tell you that that is the absolute speed of light. Yet, as I have argued, the true speed of light is actually infinite and absolute. This is the biggest new understanding on light since Einstein. Please help me share this. This will change the way we see the world. And please watch my previous videos. Thank you.